Alright guys, so I have a smart TV device here, the uh, NVIDIA Shield TV, and the problem with it is that it uses a remote that pretty sure runs proprietary software and none of the documentation for its uh, creation is actually open, so I decided, hey, I should go ahead and make my own remote for this uh, device. And it actually works on any Android device because that's what the Shield TV runs. So let's just go through a basic overview of what you need. So first you're going to need a breadboard, obviously. The second thing that you're going to need is a Teensy. It's a, basically a small Arduino, but it has HID output instead of serial like most Arduinos. I'm pretty sure the Arduino Leo will support HID output, but normal ones will just support serial. So you need a Teensy, which you could probably get for like 15 bucks or something. This is the 4.0. Uh, I only know if it works on the 4.0 and the 4.1. Those are the only two devices I've tested on. And you need eight male-to-male uh, -male copper wires, and then you need one 12-key 12, uh, 12 keypad. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to put the Teensy, obviously, into the breadboard. It doesn't really matter where, but um, you have to press it down pretty far. So you want it, you want it flush against the board just like that. And, oh, I also mentioned you're going to need a uh, micro USB cable as well. Anyways, so what we want to do next is you want to find where pin 9 is, and then you want to orient the keypad just like this so that you line up the proper pins with the wires. And you want to take the leftmost, uh, I guess, pin on the actual keypad and plug that into pin 9 on the team C. After that, you just want to do these all in order, going from, I guess, 9 to 2. Uh, you can do it the other way around because obviously it doesn't matter what order you plug the wires in, but you don't want to mix them up because otherwise the device won't work properly. So let's just get these wires plugged in here. And eventually I am going to solder this in. This is just a prototype. However, this is probably going to be pretty close to the final design. I'm going to 3D print a case for it, I guess, which is going to be interesting. I'll probably post a video about that as well, post like a time lapse or something of me designing it. However, that is going to be prob uh, probably the final design for this project. Let's get a, all right, one more wire. And let me make sure those are all lined up properly. Didn't mix any of them up. That wire didn't go in very well. There we go. All right. Yep. 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 Uh. All right, so it seems that I've uh, put them all in their proper places, pins nine to two from left to right on the keypad. And after this, what we want to do is we want to get our micro USB cable, plug that into the front, and you want to hook the end of it into your computer. Uh, I'll probably put some kind of tutorial on the screen real quick. What you want to do is install the Arduino IDE it works on Mac OS Windows and Linux. Um, of course, I used it on Linux. And then you want to install, uh, I think it's called Teensy Duino, and also works on Mac OS Windows and Linux. The uh, Linux instructions, if you download the binary like manually, I don't know, it didn't really work for me, but they have instructions for doing a CLI installation, so that should work for you just fine. Um, it's under all the normal stuff. Anyways, so you want to install all that and then you want to get the code from the link in the description and you want to flash it onto the board. It should only take up like 2% of its memory or something like that. And then all you have to do from there is plug this into some kind of USB extender if you like and then plug it into the actual device that you want to control. Now you could get something, I guess like a little dongle that you put on the end of it and then it will connect wirelessly to whatever device you're using and that would work as well but for now I'm just going to be using my phone so we don't really need that because my phone is obviously an Android device so let me pull, plug that in USB-C and I've already flashed the code onto here a while ago so that's good let me get my phone real quick 
and you can see right here, I'm going to plug it in, and in my notifications bar, you'll immediately see that it notifies me that it's a keyboard. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to outline the basic controls here. So 2 is going to be up, and you can see that if I press 2, it goes up, 8 is down, it goes down, and then 4 is left, and 6 is to the right. So and that's all fine and good, those are the directions. Uh, if you want to go back, it's going to be the star, and if you want to go home, it's the pound. I tried to keep it aligned with what the actual Android controls are. And then if you want to select, it's going to be the 5 key. So let's select that, and you can see that we can scroll up and down, you know. We can select, we can go back, we can go home, and those are really all the keys. If needed, I've set one to be escape, just in case you're on something that's not really made for remote usage. And I'm probably going to make probably three the uh, tab key, just in case you need that as well. And uh, yeah, that's, that's about it for the actual function of the, uh, I guess, the keypad. So let me unplug this real quick. So since I uh, like to not put any like filler or whatever in the beginning of my videos so people can just watch and be informed, I want to explain the actual use of this. So uh, with the NVIDIA Shield per se, uh, you can use controllers on it just fine. I have plenty of video game controllers. I have the uh, Nintendo Switch Pro controller and that works just fine. However, the problem is that if I want it to actually connect to my Switch here, then I need to use the Bluetooth on this, and it will connect to this through Bluetooth, but then I have to repair it to my Switch, which is annoying. I don't want to have to do that every single time. And yes, it, it, gets, it gets very annoying. So the second thing that I came up with was, well, I know the Wii remotes work over Bluetooth. Why can't I use that? Well, I don't know. It just, it just didn't work for me. Not sure why. And then the third thing I came up with is using my GameCube controller, but that's annoying because it has such a long wire. And then on top of that, you need an adapter to plug it in. So all of those just seemed like bad solutions. So I was like, well, why not just build my own remote for this thing? So that's what I did. Um, if you want the code for the remote, like I said, it's in the description. I've included a picture of the breadboard in the description as well in case you need help for figuring out which pins go where and whatnot. And I think that's actually all the information you need. It's a very simple build. Um, the code was probably the longest thing that took me to actually create in this. I was having a lot of trouble, trouble actually getting like the signaling to work, but I basically just created a, a void loop and then a case statement. Or I guess it's a switch statement when it comes to C, but it's a case statement in POSIX shell. Anyways, they're very similar languages. But a uh, switch statement and what this does is it actually sends input based on what I tell it, based on the direction or the location. And basically I have it set up so if you hit one, it'll print one to the serial monitor and then it checks if it tried to print one. It sets the, um, basically I have a, I think it's called custom key or key pressed. And that variable is what this sets. So if I hit one, it will set key pressed or I think, I think it actually is custom key. It'll set the custom key variable to one, and then it checks if the custom key variable is one. If so, send escape through the keyboard library. And then if it's two, uh, the up arrow, eight down arrow, and then the home button is actually a little bit complicated. I have it hold the super key, hit the enter key, and then let go of the super key, and then let, or no, it's let go of the enter key, and then let go of the super key, just because that's how it, I guess it had to be that way. Um, probably just based off of the way that they set up key binds in the original operating system. But that wasn't, it didn't take very long to figure out. Anyways, that's it for the video. See ya.